one of the most influential editors in our times, Lionel Barber of Financial Times. Thanks so much for speaking with NDTV. And you just came out of a session where you interviewed the Indian finance minister, Peter Dambram, who made some radical statements about Indian growth story and what happens with elections. Well, he's now talking an optimistic game. He thinks that India is coming back. The worst is over. Thinks the central bank governor, Mr. Rajan, is a formidable force too. So I think uh, we're seeing a different sort of story from India now. But of course, as you say, the elections are coming. So maybe we will be hearing that. But does the global media buy the story? As a seasoned journalist, do you feel what the finance minister of India said today is authentic and will happen? I think that the worst is over for India. I visited India uh, in November. That was my sense then. Uh, the question is whether you can get back to that 7% plus growth rate that you had in 2005, 6, 7, which the finance minister alluded to. There I'm not quite so sure. The key is structural economic reform, getting all those infrastructure projects actually happening on the ground. And do you feel that elections have stalled all that? Because the criticism from the current government's second tenure, which is the UPA2, has been that essentially reforms just froze in the last term. The first term was still beneficial, but the second term has been extremely slow and painful. The second term has been slow and painful, but I think that in the last 12 months or so, things have become a little unblocked. I also think, very importantly, that there's things happening on the ground in the states. In other words, those tough chief ministers are actually driving the action in places like Bihar and Guj Gujarat, rather than all being directed from Delhi. And when you talk about the chief minister of Gujarat, I have to ask you about Narendra Modi. What does the world say about such a controversial leader who is adored by the business community and a lot from the development side, but has his fair share of criticism as far as human rights or possible violations in 2002 in Gujarat riots are concerned? Well, there are some questions about the precise role of Mr. Modi in those uh, riots. Uh, he sought to clarify. I think the real uh, the message, though, from the rest of the world is, look, India is the greatest, the largest democracy in the world, so let's see what the people vote for. And when they voted, let's see what happens and we'll deal with it. Your session made a lot of headlines, actually, in India, because it's a time where Pichinamram actually said that Rahul Gandhi will be Congress's official prime ministerial candidate. They haven't formally announced that, but he says in all likelihood that is a given certainty. Now, versus Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi, does the global media perceive one more favorably than the other? We don't know that much about Mr. Gandhi because he's been somewhat behind the scenes and not many of the world's media go out and track him when he's doing the work on the ground that he has been quietly. So uh, what we do know, of course, is he becomes from that great dynasty and it would also be a shift. And Mr. Chidambaram today told me that the model of having a technocratic prime minister and somebody in effect governing from behind the scenes, that that model is over now. We're going to see something different. So it'll be an all-action prime minister now with his hands on the, firmly on the table. Well, let's not get too overexcited here. We don't know. Mr. Gandhi has never had that kind of chief executive experience. And in that sense, he's somewhat different from Mr. Modi, who's been chief minister for some time. So right now, the report card for Mr. Narendra Modi seems to be more extensive, at least, given the fact that he's been in the media publicity, he's been in the public domain, and has work behind him. The media profile is stronger, and yes, he has got chief executive uh, experience. But the other question I asked Mr. Chidambaram, he didn't give me an answer, is, well, has Mr. Modi peaked? Has it all come too early? And, we don't know And yet. What, what do you think? I think that there's three or months or more before the election, so we don't know. Which are the other uncomfortable questions where you didn't get an answer from Mr. Chidambaram and you're hoping uh, to bring them up in India in some way? Well, it would be interesting if there is a very messy outcome, very fragmented. Mr. Chidambaram suggested that that could be uh, the case. In which case, is it the hour of the technocrat? Do we bring back someone like Mr. Chidambaram? And uh, what did he have to say about that? Because that's a question which had been doing the rounds in the last several months as well. Well, he's a very modest man, isn't he?
the world would be happy to have the finance minister, the current finance minister, as the future leader? Well, I, I think the world is looking for clear direction from India. The world is, is, is looking for India to realize its great potential. And what we don't want is a fractured outcome when nobody has any power and it's dissipated. Uh, so let, let, let's just see what, what, let's leave it to the people to decide. Okay, so India in the Financial Times editorial page, where will it figure finally? Just tell me in 2014, where do you feel India will figure prominently on the top page in headlines or it's more of a backstory for at least this year? No, it's not a backstory. It's a, it's a very important story because of the, of the election. So we will have it front and centre. Look forward to that coverage. Thank you so much, Lionel, for speaking with us. It's a great pleasure to be with you. Thank Thanks. you.